Now, let's get going, folks, and we'll begin like we will every day here on Menzoid Mornings with something that's really grinding my gears. Time now for the Menzoid Monologue. Well, when David Chen, the owner of Toronto's Lucky Moose Food Mart, stood up to a convicted criminal who was repeatedly ripping him off, he never expected the chain of events that would follow. It started off quite horribly. For reasons that defy logic, Chen was charged for apprehending and confining the crook. But Chen, the Chen story would indeed have an upbeat ending. The charges were eventually thrown out, and next Monday, Mr. Chen will receive a Diamond Jubilee medal from none other than the Prime Minister himself. Indeed, Chen was also the inspiration behind the Conservative government's citizen's arrest uh, law that came into effect last June. That law now empowers a private citizen to arrest a suspect when caught red-handed if the option of using police has been ruled out. It also allows people to take reasonable actions to protect themselves, their family, and their property. In other words, it's common sense. The Diamond Jubilee Medal is just desserts for Chen, who was originally accused of using so-called excessive force when he apprehended the bad guy. That's right, excessive. An adjective meaning going beyond the usual, necessary, or proper limit. I was thinking of excessiveness the other day in regard to uh, self-defense and protecting one's abode because in addition to Chen, Toronto restaurateur Naveen Polapati, a.k.a. the Spice Man, well, he also fought back last year against a thug, only to be criminally charged himself as well. Yet, what, pray tell, is a citizen or business owner supposed to do when threatened by a violent invader? Tap the criminal on the shoulder and remark, I say, my good fellow, if it's not too much bother, could you kindly sit upon the love seat and wait for the constables to pop over and arrest you. In the meantime, spot of tea, perhaps, Earl Grey or Orange Pico. In Chen's case, he was initially charged with kidnapping and assault as he had tackled the tied up, as he tackled and tied up the habitual thief. When the charges proceeded against Chen, the crook actually gave evidence against the victimized shopkeeper. Way to go, Crown. Can you possibly sink any lower? Also in the so-called excessive file is the case of 26-year-old Moses Mahalal. He is the man who brought his girlfriend back to her home at 3 a.m. only to find a stranger in the process of robbing the place. It should be noted his girlfriend's mother was sleeping in another room and was quite vulnerable to attack from the intruder. In any event, Mahalal grabbed a knife from the kitchen raced upstairs, and he caught the burglar hiding. An altercation ensued, and Mahalal ended up cutting 33-year-old Keno Johnson. Johnson took off what was eventually arrested. Turns out he isn't exactly a model citizen, folks. His record includes several convictions for assault, robbery, and theft. Clearly, he should never have been on the street to begin with, but I guess that's our problem, isn't it? But here's the really egregious part of the story. Mahalal was charged with aggravated assault, and he actually faced up to 14 years in the slammer if found guilty. Sanity prevailed in October, however, when charges were dropped, but the question arises, why was this man even charged in the first place? And why did the Crown require months, several months, before coming to the rightful conclusion that there was no merit to the charges? After all, this was a clear-cut case. Once you're in your own home and there's effectively nowhere left to run, what are you supposed to do when confronting the criminal element? Die? Last but certainly not least is the celebrated case of Ian Thompson, the brave citizen who was acquitted last week on firearms-related charges. This was pertaining to a 2010 incident in which he fired three warning shots at a group of men who had actually set his Ontario home ablaze with firebombs. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Thompson fired three warning shots which caused the men to flee before dousing the flames with a garden hose and then calling 911. <clears throat> but when police arrived, Thompson was treated as the criminal. He was taken into custody and his collection of firearms assorted handguns worth over $10,000 as well as ammunition, they were all seized and impounded. 
Soon thereafter, Crown attorneys charged Thompson with careless use of a firearm. While these charges were later dropped, he was still charged with two counts of unsafe storage. The Crown really, really wanted its pound of flesh. Although, again, common sense eventually prevailed. The good news, however, is that if the Crown decides not to appeal the case, Thompson's collection of guns must be returned to him within 30 days. The bad news? For standing up to those thugs, both the criminal and Crown prosecutor type, Thompson has racked up some $60,000 in legal bills. Talk about winning the battle yet losing the war. There ought to be a law. Oh, actually, I almost forgot. There is one. Thus, moving forward, let's now hope that brain-dead cops and egotistical crown attorneys do the right thing when it comes to sorting out who the criminals are and who the law-abiding citizens are. I don't think that's too much to ask. And that's the Menzoid Monologue.